Which Magic Kingdom attractions have the most popular lightning lanes? How can you get more than one lightning lane at a time? And what else can Genie Plus get you in the park besides line skipping privileges? We've got the ultimate Genie Plus game plan for you today to help you rock your day in the OG Disney World Park Magic Kingdom. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Now that Disney Genie is more popular than ever, it's time to really start honing in on how to perfect your lightning lane skills before you jump into your big Orlando vacation, especially if you're planning on visiting Magic Kingdom soon, since this park sees the highest crowds as of late and having lightning lane privileges comes in handy. By the way, looking for a Genie Plus cheat sheet that you can turn to even after this video wraps up today? Then make sure to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash disneygenieplus. We're going to get our help and free Digital Genie Plus Companion sent your way for free. Did I say free? It's free. In case you're not familiar with what Disney Genie Plus is, here's a super speedy recap for you. Disney Genie Plus, it's an optional paid service that you can find on your My Disney Experience app. It's a planning tool and it allows you to bypass the standby lines, meaning all those lines you have to stand in to ride rides, and enter the lightning lanes of certain attractions by paying a base price. Now that base price starts at $15 per day per person, with the potential to get as high as $35 per day or even higher depending on the season and the holiday and how busy it is. Now this is at Disney World. Disneyland also has Genie Plus, but that's going to be a different video. Got that? Awesome. All right, here we go. First, know the three key factors. First and foremost, we got to answer the big question here. Is the extra cost for Disney Genie Plus actually going to be worth it? To determine this, you can look at three factors. Number one, which park you're visiting. In the case of Magic Kingdom, having Lightning Lane access can be a huge benefit since this is the park that not only sees some of the highest crowds throughout the year, but also has the most rides to choose from. Factor two, the projected crowdedness. Again, Magic Kingdom is really busy, really often, but during those slower times throughout the year, the extra cost might not be worth it. To determine if you're gonna need to rely on lightning lanes for your Magic Kingdom day, consider what season you'll be visiting, and interestingly enough, what ticket prices look like. The lower the ticket price, the more likely you're gonna be visiting during a time of year when the crowds are more reasonable, cause Disney will hike up those prices when demand is high. Ironically, if the price is high, you should probably buy. And that is what I'm gonna make my next t-shirt say. And factor number three, your urgency. If your one true goal of your Magic Kingdom day is to hit as many rides as possible, then yeah, lightning lanes are gonna be your new BFF. But if you only care about getting on the rides that don't have lightning lanes, or you're only planning on going on a few rides during your visit, or you really don't mind waiting in lines all that much, then you won't need to tack on the extra expense that is Disney Genie Plus. Figure out what your group wants to prioritize beforehand. See if having lightning lanes will actually make sense for your particular Magic Kingdom itinerary. It also makes a difference if you have multiple Magic Kingdom days on your trip or just one to get everything in. Okay, the next tip you got to think about, make your first selections early. All right, it's time to start your day and you're going to be starting it bright and early if you want to get a head start on making those lightning lane selections. You can make your first lightning lanes starting at 7 a.m. on the day of your visit for any park, but you can purchase Genie Plus as early as midnight. That way you don't have to scramble at 7 a.m. to purchase Genie Plus and grab your first lightning lane. That 7 a.m. lightning lane drop will give you your pick of the crop. Another rhyme, we're basically Dr. Seuss. Just don't forget to set those alarms and get the hotel coffee brewing. Important reminder, you can only book one lightning lane at a time, so make sure to have your top ride picked out and ready to book first. Now, we're going to talk more about how you can collect more lightning lanes throughout the day for the time being. Just know that as soon as you use the lightning lane you're currently holding, you'll be able to immediately book another one right after. Next up, decide if you want to skip other attraction lines. When you first think about what lightning lanes can do for you, skipping over the bulk of the ride lines at Magic Kingdom is probably what comes to mind first, but lightning lanes at Magic Kingdom can cover more than just rides. You can also get a lightning lane for seeing Mickey and Minnie at Town Square Hall, seeing the princesses at Princess Fairytale Hall, Ariel's Grotto, Enchanted Tales with Belle, priority viewing of the Festival of Fantasy Parade, which will give you access to a roped off section over at the Castle Hub near the partner statue to get a better angle on the floats, 
and Philharmagic and Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Though, side note, I wouldn't waste a lightning lane on either of these, since they usually have super low weights or are walk-on experiences as is. It's important to know that just because something has a lightning lane offering doesn't necessarily mean it's worth using a lightning lane for that. But we're going to talk more about that in just a bit. All right, time to figure out which attractions to book first. All right, so you've got your Genie Plus purchased and you're now staring at a full list of over 20 plus lightning lanes for Magic Kingdom. What on earth are you gonna choose first? Well, probably the ones that are more likely to book up first. And we know which ones they are. Hate to break it to you, but even though you've purchased Disney Genie Plus, that doesn't mean you're automatically guaranteed to get all your priority rides. On Magic Kingdom's busiest days, Genie Plus not only has the tendency to sell out, but certain lightning lanes can book up solid before the afternoon even rolls around. See why getting up at 7 a.m. is crucial? The earlier you can start booking your lightning lanes, the better off you'll be. And we've got another tip for that a little bit later. Now, according to the Genie Plus section on the Disney World website, it states that guests can expect to reserve two to three lightning lanes per day if they buy Genie Plus. But if you play your cards right, you could surpass this number and then some just by getting up and around earlier. On several occasions, we've purchased Genie Plus, used this up and atom strategy, and have been able to book 12 that's right, 12 lightning lanes in Magic Kingdom for a single day. And our friends at All Ears have gotten even more than that in some of their challenges. So which lightning lanes tend to book up the fastest? We're gonna put the top 10 most in-demand Magic Kingdom attractions up on the screen right now. Take note of these because if you see something on this list that's also gonna be one of your priority rides, then you'll know you'll need to snag a lightning lane for it ASAP. Keep in mind that you'll be automatically assigned the soonest return time for Genie Plus lightning lanes, so you won't be able to choose a specific time frame that might work better with your schedule. That being said, there are ways to potentially adjust the return time you're given, which we'll discuss later on. For now, let's talk about how you can start outsmarting the Genie Plus system by collecting more than one lightning lane at a time. Remember how I said you're only allowed to make one lightning lane selection at a time? Once you've made your selection, you can only make your next lightning lane when A, you have used the one you booked, B, your first return time window has ended, if you miss it, or C, 120 minutes have passed since you booked your last one. I know, very specific, right? Now, essentially, you can book another lightning lane two hours after reserving the previous one, if the return time for the first lightning lane is more than two hours away. For example, don't worry, we'll break this down. For example, let's say it's 10 a.m. and I go ahead and book a lightning lane for Peter Pan's flight. The return time I'm given is 3 p.m. since lightning lanes seem to be flying off the shelves for this ride. Now, that doesn't mean I can't book another lightning lane until 3 p.m. All I've got to do is wait for that two hour cool down to pass before booking my next one. So since I booked Peter Pan's flight at 10, I'll be able to make my next selection at noon. Now, confession time, this isn't really cheating on the Genie Plus system, it just feels like it. In fact, thanks to a handy dandy Genie Plus update from last summer, your Genie Plus tool will actually inform you about when you can book your next lightning lane, so you don't have to keep track yourself. If you go to My Disney Genie Day in the My Disney Experience app, just tap on the tip board section to find a useful countdown banner at the top of your screen. If you can't book a new reservation yet, this banner will give you the actual time that you can start booking again. And if you're eligible to book a new reservation because the cooldown period has come and gone, that banner will tell you to book now. When you start using this 120 minute strategy, you're going to be able to accomplish what many refer to as stacking lightning lanes or holding more than one lightning lane at any given time. Technically, if you weren't planning on going into the parks until later on in the day, you could still stack up on lightning lanes for the evening and have three or four already stacked up and ready to go for some quick back to back ride throughs during the night. Because as long as you have that park pass reservation, valid park tickets, and Genie Plus already purchased, you don't have to be inside the parks to start stacking these bad boys up every 120 minutes all day long. Just find the rides with return times that correspond with when you're gonna be in the park and start booking away. Now, remember when I said you could sort of adjust those return times sometimes? That's called modifying your lightning lanes. I mentioned how you can't choose your return times when you book a lightning lane through Genie Plus, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily stuck with the time you're assigned. When you first select a lightning lane for a ride, there's always the possibility you'll be forced to make a selection that isn't really your first choice. It might even be your last choice if it just so happens to clash with one of your advanced dining reservations. Yeah, it's drama. 
The good news is that available selections change all day long. We often see extra ride times pop up throughout the day. So even if maybe Pirates of the Caribbean doesn't have a ride time that works for your particular schedule when you're booking a Lightning Lane, the exact time you need might pop up later in the day if somebody cancels that time. And that's why it's so important to keep checking the My Disney Experience app, refreshing the page and crossing your fingers. If you happen to see a better Lightning Lane time appear for the ride you've already booked, or if you see a Lightning Lane for a completely different ride that you thought was already booked up solid for the day, you can 100% modify your Lightning Lane reservations without having to cancel them completely. That means you can modify your Lightning Lane for a different return time or a different ride, and you still won't lose your 120 minute countdown. Let's take my 10 a.m. example that I used earlier. You know how I booked a Lightning Lane for Peter Pan's flight and was given a 3 p.m. return time? If I check the My Disney Experience app an hour later and just so happen to find an earlier Lightning Lane for Peter Pan's flight at 1 p.m. instead, I can modify my already existing 3 p.m. lightning lane to this new time frame. But that doesn't mean my cooldown period's gonna start over. I can still book my next lightning lane once noon rolls around. A win-win. Modifications are super easy to make. Just tap on your current lightning lane selection to pull up a box of options. One of the options is modify plans. It's literally that easy. Next up, don't rely on Genie Plus for everything. Hold on there, Genie Plus may sound great at first, but it's not gonna be able to help you bypass the lines for everything. The most popular rides in Magic Kingdom, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in Fantasyland and Tron Light Cycle Run in Tomorrowland, do not have lightning lanes available for standard Genie Plus purchase. Instead, you'll have to pay for an individual lightning lane. The individual Lightning Lane attraction selections are paid up charges, separate from Genie Plus. Individual Lightning Lanes allow guests to select return times to enter a much shorter queue for a maximum of two specific and very popular attractions. And unlike Genie Plus's Lightning Lanes, you will be able to choose your return time for these rides so that they fit your schedule like a glove. So yes, if you wanted to buy individual Lightning Lanes for both Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Tron in a single day, you could. Just keep in mind that all these extra purchases can add up real fast. Though the prices of individual lightning lanes also fluctuate depending on demand, Mine Train tends to be $11 per person per ride through, while Tron is normally $20 per person. So a family of four that paid to skip the lines for both of these rides would wind up having to fork over $124 extra just to skip over the lines of two attractions. Now, if you're planning on using a park hopper during your Magic Kingdom day, then you may want to save one of those individual lightning lane slots for a different park with another in-demand attraction that you want to see even more, because you can totally hold on to two individual lightning lanes for two different parks, as long as you have that park hopper add-on already attached to your ticket. Just make sure that any individual lightning lanes you purchase before 2 p.m. are specifically for the park you have a park pass reservation for, since park hopping won't start until after 2 p.m. rolls around. Now, aside from individual lightning lanes, there are a handful of Magic Kingdom rides that don't have lightning lane queues at all, including Astro Orbiter, Liberty Square Riverboat, Prince Charming's Regal Carousel, People Mover, and Carousel of Progress, which I consider to be sort of a kind of ride. So if you're looking at this list and going, man, those are all the rides I really wanted to prioritize anyway, then there's no need to invest in those lightning lanes. You're just gonna have to stand in line for these bad boys like everyone else. But when's the best time to get in line for the non-lightning lane rides? For the most part, these rides don't see too high demand throughout the day, so they might be a good option for the early afternoon when other ride lines are starting to pick up. Astro Orbiter is one of the exceptions, however, and tends to get pretty busy by the afternoon. For a more thrilling experience with potentially lower weights, I'd try aiming to ride this aerial carousel once the sun goes down. To see an overhead view of Magic Kingdom all lit up at night while you spin around, that's great. Okay, now that you know you can choose your ride return time for individual lightning lanes, let's use that to your advantage. Tron is a thrilling experience day or night, but the thrills max out once the sun sets. You see that canopy grid covering the outdoor portion of the ride? This grid only lights up at night, which adds a whole new wow factor to the coaster, and you're not gonna be able to experience it when it's bright and sunny outside. If you're not paying for an individual lightning lane, the chance to experience Tron at night is a little more random. It all depends on what virtual queue you're given. And since virtual queues can book up quickly, you'll get what you get and you won't throw a fit. But with individual lightning lanes, you can choose a later return time and guarantee that glowing ride through of this brand new experience. 
Unlike Genie Plus, you won't be able to buy any individual lightning lanes starting at midnight the day of your visit. Instead, you'll always pay for and book these lightning lanes at the same time. If you're staying at a Disney-owned resort during your trip, then you'll be able to start purchasing individual lightning lanes as early as 7 a.m. However, if you're staying off property, then individual lightning lanes won't go live for you until Magic Kingdom opens, which is usually around 9 a.m. In the case of Tron, individual lightning lanes could very well be completely sold out by the time 9 a.m. rolls around. So if this is something you want to make sure to get your hands on, you'll probably want to look at staying on property in one of Disney's value, moderate, or deluxe resorts. Totally up to you, but that's the best way to get an individual lightning lane for Tron. Again, how you do Magic Kingdom is totally your call, but just based on what our DFB reporters tend to see in the park every single day, the lines for Dumbo the Flying Elephant, It's a Small World, Mad Tea Party, and the Magic Carpets of Aladdin don't ever tend to get outrageously long unless you're visiting the week after Christmas. Then every ride is going to take 84 years for you to get through. So I'd recommend holding off on getting a lightning lane for any of these four rides until after you've done everything else you wanted to use your Genie Plus purchase for. That being said, if you ever see one of these ride lines pushing the brink of 30 minutes or more, don't get in line for them yet. Instead, locate the shows and attractions tip board on your My Disney Experience app, scroll down, tap on one of these rides, and learn about their forecasted wait times. Then you'll know approximately what times these queues will be at their predicted lowest waits for the day. And don't forget about Genie Plus's newest offering. It can do more than just help you skip the ride lines. Genie Plus also includes fun extra features along with your purchase, like augmented reality photo lenses and themed audio experiences. But the newest addition to the Genie Plus offering is the free digital photo pass downloads for all your attraction pictures taken on the day that you purchase it. Normally, you'd have to pay $18.95 for one digital download of these in-ride pictures, or you'd automatically receive them if you purchase memory maker for your trip, which will give you unlimited photo pass downloads for $169. However, because of this new Genie Plus update, you'll now automatically receive your in-ride Magic Kingdom pictures for Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, Haunted Mansion, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Space Mountain. And that feature alone could help make the price of Genie Plus a little easier to swallow. All right, we have made it to the part of the video that has our super expert tips. This is all the stuff we didn't want to not put in this video, but it didn't really fit anywhere else. Those little tips and tricks and things that we've found just going to Disney World every single day that we know are gonna help you maximize your Genie Plus experience in Magic Kingdom. First of all, book lightning lanes that make sense. Let me explain. There's a good possibility you'll be able to book back-to-back -back lightning lanes without a whole lot of cooldown period in between. Now, if that's the case, don't wear yourself out by booking rides that are constantly across the park from each other. For example, if you book your first lightning lane for Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and then your next one for Space Mountain, and then your next one for Jungle Cruise, and then you're literally going to be ping-ponging across the park from Frontierland to Tomorrowland to Adventureland. Study the park maps ahead of time, make yourself a lightning lane game plan that'll not only be efficient, but save your poor aching feet. Also, plan around your park hopping. Let's say you're starting your day in Magic Kingdom, but you'll be hopping over to a different park once the clock strikes 2 p.m. You can absolutely book lightning lanes for the second and third and fourth parks you plan on visiting, but those who made park pass reservations for those other parks are going to get first dibs at lightning lanes. For example, if you're starting off in Magic Kingdom, then that means you have a park pass reservation for Magic Kingdom, and that means you'll get to book Magic Kingdom's lightning lanes first. Those who are park hopping into Magic Kingdom later on won't be able to make lightning lane selections until the listed return times for the Magic Kingdom rides are after 2 p.m., which makes sense. No use holding onto an 11 a.m. lightning lane for Pirates of the Caribbean if you can't even get into the park yet, right? And the same goes for you if you're planning on jumping from Magic Kingdom to another park later on in the afternoon. You won't be able to make any lightning lane selections until all the return times for those other park rides hit 2 p.m. and beyond. So focus on grabbing those Magic Kingdom lightning lanes for now, and then keep your eye on the other parks too, just in case lightning lanes do open up for them sooner than you were expecting. Important notice though, the way park pass reservations work for 2023 will be completely different by the time 2024 rolls around. Starting January 9th, 2024, park passes will not be needed at all for those who have date-based tickets. In other words, people who buy theme park tickets that are tied to specific dates or sets of dates won't need park passes to get into the parks whatsoever. That's going to be most of us. We'll continue to keep you updated on this major change as we learn more about what it means for the future of Disney World vacations. The next tip is to know when to ask for a refund. Let's say Seven Dwarfs Mine Train goes down right when your individual lightning lane return time for it is supposed to kick in. 
The My Disney Experience app will automatically give you the experience redemption, which is basically a boarding pass that's good for any time until the end of the day. This will only be good for the individual Lightning Lane you originally made the purchase for, so don't try to take it over to Tron or anything. The hope is that later on in the day, the ride will go back online, you'll still be able to bypass the main queue whenever you get the chance to. While typically Genie Plus purchases are non-refundable, there are rare instances when you'll be able to get a refund for your individual Lightning Lane in case the ride goes down and never comes back online for the remainder of the day. Just make sure to talk to a cast member at Guest Relations at the front of the park about your options. But keep in mind that if the ride does reopen at any time during the day, you won't be eligible for a refund. And learn what to do when you miss your return time. Okay, back to our Peter Pan's flight scenario again. When I modified my lightning lane to 2 p.m., I didn't modify it for 2 p.m. on the dot. I have one hour to get into the lightning lane and experience this attraction. So technically, my lightning lane is good anytime between 2 and 3 p.m. However, let's say I get stuck on a ride or my afternoon meal is running later than I was expecting. Guess I should have kept that 3 p.m. lightning lane return time after all. Will I still be allowed to enter the lightning lane even if I'm running behind? Well, that depends, really. Much like a dining reservation, lightning lanes have kind of a 15-minute grace period. So even if you get in line at like 3.05 or 3.15, you may still be okay. But if you're later than 15 minutes, you may be out of luck. But don't give up yet. Always, always speak to a cast member at the entrance of the ride first just to see if they can make an exception. Depending on the circumstances, you could still be given the all clear. Note that these exceptions are made on an individual case-by-case -case basis. And just because a cast member might have to turn you away doesn't mean they're doing it to spite you or anything. Sometimes if the parks are just wildly packed out that day or you're showing up for your lightning lane hours later than the original time frame listed, then you may have to accept the loss and move on along. All in all, try to be on time for your lightning lane so you can avoid all that unnecessary stress entirely. And find out when you can make lightning lanes. So these are only available to book during regular park hours. So you're not gonna be able to get them for early theme park entry, extended evening hours, or after hours parties. Instead, these extra hours events and benefits are gonna provide you with shorter ride lines without needing to make a Genie Plus or individual lightning lane purchase. But these can also be much more expensive than just getting Genie Plus or individual lightning lane for the day. So do your research, figure out the pros and cons of each of these potentially extra purchases and figure out which shorter ride line method you're going to want to actually take advantage of during your trip. So Genie Plus sounds intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it all and you know all the pro tips that'll help you snatch up the most sought after lightning lanes in Magic Kingdom, then that extra cost might just become worth it. Don't forget, we've also got a free downloadable cheat sheet all about Genie Plus just waiting for you to claim. All you gotta do is drop us your name and email and we'll send it to your inbox ASAP. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.